You know, I think one of the reasons that racial profiling is such a critical issue is that it, it goes to the core of, you know, the orientation we have to poor people of color. How do we view a kid standing on the street corner or walking down the street? How are they viewed and how do we respond to them when we see them? And that same punitive impulse, that same, you know, leaping to conclusions occurs in schools, through school discipline policies. It occurs, you know, in tracking who seems <coughs> like, looks like, who's being profiled as someone who has potential and opportunity, who seems like they're no good, headed nowhere fast. Um, and that same impulse, punitive impulse, discriminatory impulse, infects our criminal justice system. And so I think by talking about racial profiling, it creates an opportunity for us to talk about what are the attitudes, ideas, stereotypes, beliefs we have about those people that drive not just law enforcement decision making, but this, you know, influence the way we respond to poor folks of color in all of our institutions. So when we talk about racial profiling, it's not just about law enforcement. It's about how we as a society respond to people who are viewed as others. But I think there's another, you know, <laughs> equally important reason, which is that at least with respect to kind of this whole phenomenon of mass incarceration, there's a myth that, you know, our prison population has exploded, quintupled in the space of 30 years due to crime rates, due to, you know, big increases in crime. And it's just not true. It's just not true. Our prison population has exploded for reasons that have stunningly little to do with crime rates over the past 30 years. And um, nearly everything to do with the war on drugs and the Get Tough movement, a wave of punitiveness that washed over the United States. And these racial profiling tactics, the stop and frisk tactics, the sweeps that occur in poor communities of color, pulling people over DWB style, searching those cars, all of that is sweeping you know, millions of folks into the criminal justice system, labeling people, you know, criminals and felons, and then results in them being ushered into a permanent second class status. So I think because the impact of racial profiling is so profound in contributing not just to racial disparities, but to the phenomenon of mass incarceration itself, we do have to deal <laughs> with the problem of racial profiling on its own terms, and it's not going to be enough to just address educational issues in our schools, which ought, which ought to be addressed, but uh, we have to deal with the phenomenon of racial profiling itself.